need to get going. So why don't you guys maybe ask some other people? Uh-huh. That's a culture problem, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I won't argue there. Huge shout out to our friends over at Allegiance Gold for sponsoring this video. In 2023, today, does systemic racism exist? Yes. I think that it kind of has to in a way. And do you agree as well? I also do. Do you guys mind if I ask you, what is systemic racism? Uh, if you if you were to do your best with kind of describing it. it. Would be the type of established behaviors, customs, and interactions that people continue to modify and accept that excludes parts of our society based yeah. on race. Your definition, which I agree with you for the most part, what I consider uh, systemic racism would be in the institutions, but you said the word that you used was customs and behaviors, right? Yeah, I, you, I you did. did. You did. That's not part of the systemic definition. Systemic would be the institutions, the laws on the books, the way that... Um, you know, uh, academia admits people. Would you agree with her on that? Or? hire you. All if she clarifies one point for me. Yes, sir. And when I met about customs, if I was going to go dress for a job and I wear a dashiki, some business don't think that's acceptable. It's not fit in that cultural definition of acceptable dress. If I wear a suit and tie, oh, then that's okay. That's what I meant by customs. Okay. Like customs. Okay. how you dress. Well, I guess that would, yeah, that would, that would. But I mean, for anybody, like if I decided, <laughs> if I decided I wanted to wear a toga, right, like to, like, to deal with my Greek ancestors, and I wanted to wear a toga to the thing, they're going to be like, absolutely not. So our academic institutions, our policing institutions, our government I don't think bodies. There is, no, I don't think there's racism, and uh, that okay. cannot be because of the lawsuit, because there's in the other country, if there is racism, there's no lawsuit. You can't sue anybody. Right. Here. If a college, university, you know, be racist because of the color of her skin, they can get sued. I have a uh, mom who's not from this country. Mm-hmm. They dressed a little differently. That's an acceptable dress there. Here it is not because our customs have defined. Well, would, you, would you say that acceptable. was racist? Because it's not like it's not any. It's not any. Well, that de- that definitely. I would say that's a cultural, more cultural thing when it, it comes to like a, cultural well, differences. Okay, if I said that culture was African right. versus European, that implies some racial differences. Right, because our customs here are that you dress like a professional, you dress well, in a suit and tie. That's the definition they gave for that suit and tie. Professional. If I did that in an African country, that would be acceptable. But we live in America, right? Like, like a sari wouldn't be appropriate either, right? Like a, the Indian garb, right? The, For them, if they're in the United States. My point is, <laughs> my point is like that, that. Your cultural dress. I mean, we have we for a nation to be a nation, you have to have some shared uh, set of customs and values. And ours in this country is that you wear a suit and a tie. Women wear a, a skirt, a pantsuit. I don't know if implicit is the right word. But I think that there's a bias that's kind of in all of us. That's, that we that's don't the realize. word that people use, the implicit bias. Yes. Like you're unaware of it, but it exists. And yeah. it's not intentional, but it's still but there. it's still there. And it's kind of like um, ignorance is bliss. So I think that it kind of has to in a way, right? In terms of jobs, in terms of health care, I mean, there's a whole litany of social issues that we've never really uh, 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 addressed as a country. Yeah. Um, we we, we put band-aids on it. We put band-aids on it. We've gone to great lengths to um, not over, not only compensate for you know past um, systemic racism, but I think we've overcompensated at some point. I mean, if you look at uh, college <laughs> acceptance rates, I mean, we are discriminating against whites and Asians in favor of um, minorities, even if they have lesser test grades. And when you look at the crimes committed by people of color. I mean, they make up, black people in general, make up what, 13.8% of the population when you cut out women, elderly men, and children, you're looking at like, what, maybe 5% and they're responsible for over 50% of all the murders. I mean, that has, that's not a systemic racism problem that would seem to be more of a cultural phenomenon. Would you disagree with that? No. I would not disagree with that. You would not but, disagree with that. I would not disagree with that. But but my, my fact of the matter is, you know, it's an interesting thing because when you look at it, it depends on, on, on what kind of lens 
are you going to look at the problem with? <laughs> okay. okay. I think an objective and, 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 lens is always the best one. You, you do, but, <laughs> but, but that's, a, that's a very tough thing. It is a very tough I mean, thing. It's a very right. tough thing. Uh, but all three, of us, has but all three of us can look at the same problem and come to three very different conclusions. Right. Right. Do you guys mind if we move away from policing really quick and, and, and see, I don't mean physically. You know, I think it's a really important question for us to pinpoint what are the, what are the examples of uh, systemic racism? What systems are oppressing people of color, whatever it may be. If we're making that claim, I think we need to know how to fix it. All right, everyone, let's take a few moments to talk about today's sponsor on the heels of the second largest bank failure in US history and the eighth interest rate hike within a 12 month period, 186 more banks are at risk of collapsing. Your bank could be next unless the Fed does what they just did back in March and print $300 billion out of thin air, making your dollar worthless. Not to mention the recession risks that could have a significant impact on your investment and retirement accounts. You guys protect your financial future with something real gold and silver from my friends over at Allegiance Gold. Allegiance Gold can help you protect your IRA or 401k with physical gold and silver, or if you prefer, have it delivered securely right to your front door. Since the beginning of time, there's only one universal currency that is always of value, and that is gold. Allegiance Gold has the highest ratings in the industry. Five stars with Trustlink, a AAA rating with the Business Consumer Alliance, and an A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. A bunch of you guys have reached out to me saying how satisfied you were with the service of Allegiance Gold, and that's why I keep working with them. They're an awesome company. Oh, and here's the best part. Get up to $5,000 in free silver on a qualifying purchase when you visit protectwithklug.com or give them a call at 844-790-9191. Don't let the Fed play Monopoly with your money. Protect your future with Allegiance Gold. Visit protectwithklug.com or give them a call at 844-790-9191. I'll put links down in the description below. Let's get back to the video. People who may have like grown up in different generations who are already in those institutions may not like realize that they may have it and be implementing it in those institutions. Does that make sense? Well, how would we prove that? How do you prove it? I am... I don't know necessarily. So how do we fix it then? Like, like if if, if we if, if we're saying implicit bias is a legit thing, mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people don't uh, like the the thing that you think in your head is a lot less important than what you actually do. Most people think something in their head, but they don't actually act on it, right? Mm -hmm. So the question is, does it create anything? Does it result in anything? And if it does, how can we go about fixing that? Dang, your question is so good. Um, I think it's one of those things where it's just educating yourself um, and not, this is just what I think, no, no, but I don't, I uh, do not believe that opinion is fact. So it's like, I may have my opinion, but going, and the fact I may not like, but it's educating myself, looking at different resources, different stories. Any other examples that you think, um, that you think the United States could improve on? Not trying to kill their people. Okay, so not trying to kill people. I think that's a good start. Uh, you mean like with police or what are we talking about? Anyone. Like, you're, I think you're, you're talking about specifically about like the trans agenda. Is that everyone. What, everyone. Well, everyone. and they're talking about specifically racist we, people. Right, color. right. So just for reference, right, yeah. they, they implicit, the notion of implicit bias came from a Harvard test, an implicit bias test. And it actually was found to be junk science. Like it, it's been disproven now like a million times well, they over. They don't use it in legal cases. They don't use it in court cases right. or anything like that because you can't, I mean, it's just not something and you can so really prove. And so when we talk about systemic racism and forget the implicit bias kind of thing, we're just saying, do you see it in like policing or do you see it in academic admissions or anything like that? Do you feel like, Is there a you physical know, result of it? Yeah, do you think that there are laws, or our laws and our policies are designed to um, disproportionately disadvantage people of color? Um, I can't say it necessarily yes or no now. I think from different stories from that I've heard from my friends um, and family, yes. Uh, I think it's a hard fact kind of to realize, I think. But again, I'm going off of what my friends have told me and how they have affected. What have they told you? Um, just how and different. <laughs> so hard. I'm trying to like think back. Just experiencing it um, and having people tell you, you know what, I'm going to take that back. I don't have a specific example. I have examples like at grocery stores or obviously those different, but in specific institutions, 
I don't have an example. Yeah, so it's it there, will, you know, um, I take it back. Yeah, okay, no problem, no problem at all. What other things aside from policing would you give as an example of systemic racism? We had a black president recently. We have a lot of black mayors. We have a lot of things going on. What do you think is another example? Would you say? Well, clearly, housing and education. Housing and education. And education. If you start looking at, we can pick one. We can pick education if you'd like. Pick an education. And you what start is systemically looking. racist about the education system? Would you say? Aside from affirmative action and them discriminating against but, but that, uh, Asian and well, whites. That's a small thing. And, and those are the ones that quickly come to mind because they're great examples. Mm -hmm. You know, we're accepting, uh, we're, we're going to discriminate against white kids and we're going to bring in black and, and Asian kids because of the, the, well, the past discrimination. Asians actually get discriminated most, most in uh, college acceptance. Exa exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the college board scores and everything else, no question about it. Yeah. Go into, um, Philadelphia. A, go into a state like New Jersey, right next door, okay, which, which tends to uh, be upscale in terms of education. It tends to rank one of the highest. And look at the number, percentage of kids in New Jersey are white who go to college versus percentage of kids and correct for the population who are black who go to college. You'll find that there are less black kids as percentage who go to college. Wait, why, college. why is that an example of systemic but, 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 racism right. would you say though? The, the, if, if, if it's personal preference or personal decision making right. within but, people's but, but communities. That, that becomes the easy, does that, that, be, that, becomes, yeah, do that becomes the easy excuse. Okay. So well, if, if, I, if, if, if I decide to take this job that is not necessarily uh, uh, versus this job, that was my preference. Forget about the fact that I didn't really have a choice in it. Well, what you're saying is because there's a certain outcome, there's a, there, there, because there's a certain outcome that maybe we don't like and it's not like equal to the exact percentage of the population, there's some discrimination taking place there. But I think that's a major stretch to jump to that. Do you, not, do you, do you disagree with that? Why do you say? I, I was just, not that I, I'm jumping in, I shouldn't be talking this much, but if you control for household income, right? And if you if you take household income and say like middle to upper incomes and you control for that and you take white women, black women, white men, black men, the white women and the black women do almost identical. No, they don't. As a matter of fact, they do. No, and if they, anything, they the black don't. women do a little bit better than the the black women do a little bit better than the white right. women. Yes, exactly. We'll start from an equal playing however, field of, of, uh, however, of household income. The black men do disproportionately worse. worse. So if the black women are doing a little bit better than the white women, if not the same, but the black men are doing disproportionately worse, is that an indication of racism, even if we're controlling for household income and systemic, everything's neutral, good neighborhoods, good schools, or would that be a cultural phenomenon at that point? Well, when you say cultural, you're saying there's something inherent in within the black community which guides them into a path that we don't deem as productive as the white community that's that's really the argument you're making yeah there's different that's, cultures within that, the united but, states but, that would be the but argument that, that is a very slippery slope when you go into it that's almost uh um it's victim shaming <laughs> you well, know, I, I it really know. is in other words because... it is because what you're saying is but, if somebody can't achieve what i achieve or you achieve. Well, what about the black women that she just referred to? Right. Not not well, us. Well, right. But if they can't achieve it, then they're doing it because it's their own call. I'm saying that there's things in society that we glorify. And I think that it's true of all society, for example. Like, we glorify social media. We glorify porn culture, right? We glorify rap music and violence and all of those type of things. And they're all bad for all of society. However, it's certainly more prevalent in certain cultures than it is other ones, including fatherless homes um, and and that is the biggest determinant of of outcomes in well, life family, more than family, anything family union but let's go back let's... I go back to Tennessee yeah, there Tennessee. two two people of color who were expelled for um, lack I think it was lack of decorum um, when they also listed the number of other of the white men who were there and one that peed on a chair still there wasn't disciplined but they decided that they were it was their actions speaking out of turn that needed to be ejected i mean it was a, they they did this basically what happened on january 6th i mean they brought a mob of protesters in to disrupt um no civil proceedings. that's not what happened yes they went during a break to the floor to hold up a sign and protest something that isn't anywhere near 
There is a man who urinated in the chamber. That was and that was of, acceptable. And he was a part of okay. the. You know what? I, I have a feeling that this is going like. I I'm starting to feel like you guys are like trying to bait me. No, we're just trying to have a with conversation. With it, it's like just a conversation. I'm to have it. Well, and we need to get going. So why don't you guys maybe ask some other people? Okay. Because sure, sure. no, I don't see the thing in Tennessee as being anything other than these two men getting expelled for voicing their opinions. I'm not saying they didn't break the rules and maybe there needed to be something to be done, but don't expel two men for that when you are allowing, uh, when you are allowing others to break the same rules, bigger rules. A a lot of people that we've spoken with will talk about- Because I'm not from this country and I don't feel any racism. Yeah. So I don't think there is. Yeah. I mean, there's always people that don't like other people, Mm -hmm. but I don't believe there's racism. Like they keep on claiming and claiming on on every video you watch. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at the single motherhood rates in comparison to before the civil rights era until now, they're atrocious. They were way better than they are now. So it's not something that's inherent in 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 their culture from being here. We're not. In fact, I remember we're we're not we're not doing better than in those days relative to the whites they were still doing she was referring to uh, uh, two parent households two parent. Be, I, I'll still remember and I, I went to Penn and I still have Irvine Auditorium there I'm sure they do, yes, and they I remember do, listening to Malcolm X okay yeah. I'm not many people in this audience can talk about seeing Malcolm X and he talked about you know a, a different set of values that for one reason or another and it's sort of going back to your rap music where the black which represented maybe 20% of the population at that point. My percentages may be off, so forgive me, Malcolm. They, 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 cons- they purchased 30 or 40% of the Cadillacs, okay? okay. It, it was a perspective that they had, you know, the show, okay? So education really wasn't a driver, and then you had the breakdown. You, you had the same issues with the family breakdown. We had these same discussions about family breakdown under Johnson when he was talking about the Great Society. So that's not new. Yeah, but it's doubled since then. It's doubled, but our population is doubled too. No, no, no. I'm talking so about the single parent head rate yeah. has has, so has doubled. But also, but if you also statistically look at, speaking, not not like per capita, we're talking about. You have more single people today than you had, you know, in the 20 and 25. You, you That's have why everybody's worked off and we're deteriorating. Most people are getting married when they're 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 30 or, or later, if married at all. Uh, we have gotten people that have hit us with, you know, there's a disproportionate amount of black people that get locked up in the United States because uh, they commit more crimes. Well, okay, and a lot so, of the crimes is black against black. Actually, it's not even mm-hmm. any other race against black. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's actually something that goes for basically every race would be the majority of uh, cases being white on white, black on black. The least know. amount of people that go to jail are Asians. Yeah. I guess that's okay to say Asians, right? That's yeah. the proper word now. Why do you think that is? Because they have different morals. They have uh, father and mother. They're taught differently. And they have better economic uh, level, too. Don't you find that that's a soft bigotry of low expectations because you're saying that... Uh, I'm taking from what you're saying that... These people can't look around and say, hey, we need to prioritize these things, but they're not capable of doing it. They're not capable of looking around saying, hey, I know what the right way is, and it's hard work to do it, right? I'm still refusing because why? What's the answer there? Well, and so- there may, not be the, there may not be the role models. But is there, that, is that society's might... fault or is that their community's fault? Uh, you know, uh, That's a culture problem, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I won't argue there. Do you put a nuclear family structure and culture as a more deciding factor for somebody's socioeconomic status over the color of their skin and race? Yes, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because there's successful people in every race. I mean, we had a black president, right? I mean, I didn't get into trouble because my mother guided me the right way. I mean, I did have a father, but my mother was the one that guided me the most. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't get in trouble. I uh, grew up around gangs, Hispanic gangs, never joined a gang. Why is that? Because I had both parents and they taught me the right way to follow. So I'm tired of those excuses that they don't make it because this and that. Get to work, go to school, and you can continue on. But I'm, in, not, in, I'm not quite sure what creates the role models. 
In other words, it takes a good no, strong no, no. man. Look Probably at Ben Carson, Thomas Solwell, right? Like, look at these. Soul. Look at the soul. Whatever. Did I, so I said it wrong. Whatever. And I read him. I love him. But anyway, um, but no. Look at these men, right? And they have. They will tell you time and time again that they got picked on for having a briefcase and going to school, for being the smart kid, for um, you know, for wanting to be better, for wanting to be smart. They were absolutely torn apart by their peers, and that's encouraged. So, what would it take? for one leader to stand up and say, you know what, no, this is the way, but there doesn't seem to be enough people doing that. All right. The media seems to say that like white supremacy is the biggest threat to our nation and there's been a lot of like attention drawn towards certain cases when uh, we have black victims and things like that. Why do you think that is? Because the media is going to show what sells, right? You want somebody to watch something, they're going to show whatever people are talking about, right? They're not going to show you the whole spectrum of what's going on. I've seen other races get beat up by themselves or by police officers, but also sometimes are getting beat up because they're, the way they're acting toward the police officer. I mean, they have to defend themselves too. If you are respectful, yes sir, no sir, what did you stop me for? Or what, if they ask for an ID, show the ID. What's the problem with it? I, I, I just don't get it. All right, Evan, that is it for today. So we did run into a lot of people that believe that systemic racism is real, but a lot of people also just really had no idea what it was. Lisa, how do you think the conversations went today? I think they went pretty well. We had a good uh, variety of yeah. opinion there and a lot of walking back done, so that made me happy. Absolutely, absolutely. You guys, let me know what you guys thought about these conversations down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and hit that bell notification button so you're notified. Next time we post, we'll catch you guys next time. Does systemic racism exist? Well said.